Assalamu alaikum khawateen hazrat. Wasim Hassan welcomes you to lecture number 12 of Marketing for Nonprofits MKT 628 at the Virtual University of Pakistan. The component of learning is Marketing Information Systems or MIS. Our understanding of this component is going to be in continuation of what we have learned about marketing research. In other words, the basic objective of marketing research that we know is to establish certain findings and elevate our confidence to make certain good decisions. If we understand our business, we understand the environment, yet we carry out certain market research studies because we're not absolutely sure about how things may look like once we have the established findings. And the fact is that once we have carried out marketing research, the chances are our findings may look a little different from what we earlier had assumed or what really was the hypothesis before we carried out the market research study. Experts are of the view that uh, the non-profit sector being cash strapped most of the times is not in a position to carry out marketing research studies every time a situation warrants that kind of a study. So in other words, we have to have a certain means whereby we can generate accurate information that must lay the ground for us to make good decisions. And uh, that ground could be laid by looking into a few areas uh, that we call marketing information systems. Uh, first of all, we have to develop the understanding about the, what information systems are. Uh, basically, it is collection of information and uh, the storing of information and then analyzing the same information so that it could be disseminated among all those managers who are supposed to make or who are responsible to make important, vital, strategic decisions for the program that you are to execute. Experts say that uh, the information systems uh, they should be such that good information that they should automatically get the feed into the system, thereby providing you with the platform that you need to make decisions. Um, and in other words, uh, it has to be kind of a routine effort, uh, some kind of a set uh, procedural uh, mechanism whereby you come up with uh, the right most information on daily basis and then weekly basis and then monthly basis. The idea is to generate and then analyze information. Before I proceed with uh, the four subsystems that form the overall marketing information systems, let me talk about the five generalized areas that are um, addressed the by information systems in any environment. May that be a commercial environment, meaning the private sector, or may that be non-profits. Information systems could basically deal with the things like, uh, or rather data on customers. In the context of non-profits, we can say that uh, we need to look into our customers if uh, they happen to be uh, the ones to buy our products or services or any mission that we are out to sell or out to accomplish. So we need to develop uh, data about uh, the customers, activists, the volunteers, and so on and so forth. The second area of uh, the data generation is the operations. If the nonprofit happens to be uh, into some kind of operations, for example, you are into the food bank or nursing home or uh, an organization that is uh, helping people on uh, the medication to control uh, different uh, ailments, Okay, you are supposed to have complete data on the nature of operations that you are undertaking. I'll talk on this a little more with the help of examples in, in a moment. The third area 
that uh, requires us to uh, generate data is on um, employees. And uh, when I talk about employees, it is employees anywhere, uh, meaning the commercial sector or the nonprofit sector. In the nonprofit sector, along with employees, we need to generate data on activists and volunteers again. And then uh, the fourth area is uh, about um, suppliers. And in the nonprofit context, uh, it has to be not just the suppliers who are supplying different uh, the products uh, or offering us different services or uh, helping us with some uh, vital uh, information because they happen to be a great source of uh, the information uh, provision to the nonprofit that we are operating. Uh, we need to uh, also uh, generate information on our partners if we uh, happen to be in a cost marketing relationship. We need to uh, generate data and information on any allied parties that are um, into partnership with, with the nonprofit. And the fifth area with which uh, information systems deal is that of financial data. We know without financial data, no company or no organization, commercial or nonprofit, is going to find out the way it really stands. Therefore, we need to carry out um, an exercise of generating this data on a daily basis. With this understanding of uh, the five major areas with which information systems deal, we need to ask ourselves certain questions before we get into developing the understanding for the subsystems that form the overall marketing information systems. And that understanding can be developed by asking ourselves certain questions like, what information we need in order to make the decisions that we need to make? So in other words, first of all, we have to be very clear about the decisions that we need to make on a daily basis, and then we have to zero in on the content of the information that we need to generate. The next question you may ask yourself in this context is, do you really have that information or not? If you have that information, in what form it comes? It has to be institutionalized by developing certain procedures, whereby this information automatically feeds into the system. And that's what I said to begin with, that we have to have a system whereby information generated automatically feeds into it and becomes a bigger database for us to later analyze that information and then disseminate it. So the next question that we may ask ourselves is, okay, what is it that is going to bring in all the information that we desire? Meaning all that portion of the information that is lacking, in case we think we do not have complete information, or in case we might think to ourselves that we need to improve that information because we want to make even better decisions. And then we look into the possibility of uh, looking into certain publications, so the magazines, journals. Uh, we also consider the possibility of uh, attending certain seminars whereby uh, we can uh, generate information for the future. Or uh, we also uh, may look into the possibility of putting together a research designed to carry out a comprehensive quantitative research if that is something which is going to help us and if that is something which is absolutely essential and inevitable. We might be content with uh, carrying out uh, a small the focus of the group uh, study whereby we can establish what we really want to uh, achieve in terms of generating information for the overall system. If you think that uh, the focus group is not um, uh, good enough, we might as well get into detailed interviews because that's one of the shortcomings with the focus groups that uh, we eventually may have to get into um, detailed interviews for the simple reason that uh, in many instances, the respondents generally are not uh, willing to come up with uh, very accurate and honest answers. They go by the mentality of the overall group and uh, like to, at times, give uh, responses that um, may please the moderator at that particular point in time. And therefore, if we think that we need to carry out uh, the detailed interviews, we might as well uh, consider that option so that our information base can be as accurate as possible and as comprehensive as possible in order to make the decisions that we need to make on a daily basis. For do not forget this thing, making good decisions. And we need to make decisions every now and then. But once we are clear about uh, all the tools uh, that uh, we need to have, uh, to put together all the desired information 
uh, we can uh, be uh, content with the information content required for analysis and then executing our programs with certain controls. And once we are satisfied that we are in a position to control our programs and implement those programs toward achieving the mission, I think the organization is all set about the information systems, which it can claim are good enough for them to move forward, but they should never claim that they have the best of information systems. Now, coming to the subsystems that form the overall system. Okay, the one is the internal reporting system. The second one is the market intelligence system. The third one is marketing research. So in other words, the marketing research happens to be one of the subsets or one of the subsystems of the overall marketing information systems. And that is where I would like to point out that uh, uh, we need to take a broader viewpoint that goes beyond marketing research for us to decide Okay, which subset of the overall information systems is the one that we need at a particular point in time. And the fourth one is uh, what they call uh, the marketing analytics. That subsystem, as the terminology suggests, is all about analyzing the information that we have uh, put together through interviews, through the different uh, the reports that we generate every day, or through uh, quantitative marketing research, uh, whatever is the uh, source of, uh, the, of information uh, takes uh, the backseat uh, once we start analyzing that information for us to make the decisions that we need to make. Another important thing about the MIS is that uh, it does not uh, take place in isolation. Uh, what I mean is uh, we cannot operate uh, within a silo, which is the organization it has to have a relationship with the external environment. Because we're dealing with constituents of the different uh, the forms and nature, uh, we are dealing with uh, different kinds of publics, uh, input publics, um, then um, partner publics, consuming publics. We are dealing with uh, the different segments of the external environment, which is economic environment, the social cultural environment, regulatory environment, legal and uh, all other uh, the subsets of the environments uh, which uh, you know very well affect uh, what the organization is doing. We have uh, learned uh, that particular uh, the segment, I think, uh, by total clarity. And therefore, it goes without saying that uh, the external environment and all the, the factors that govern the external environment do have a direct bearing on the subsystems that operate within the overall marketing information systems. It is an ongoing iterative process that keeps the two environments um, interactive all the time and uh, because of which uh, we are in a position to execute uh, our programs. And uh, during execution, uh, while we exercise controls, uh, we again interact with the external environment which takes us back into the internal environment and it becomes kind of an iterative process, which I'm going to show you in a while with the help of a graphical illustration. Um, the fact remains that uh, external environment into the internal environment, which consists of four subsystems, and then um, out into the environment to execute our programs. Let us talk about the first subsystem, which is all about internal reporting. I think it goes without saying that uh, we generate so many different kinds of reports uh, while we carry out our operations. Uh, we talked about um, the, the five major areas, information systems, uh, the basic they deal with. And this is uh, one thing uh, which uh, must take precedence over anything else. Whatever we do within the organization has got to be recorded and recorded as per a certain prescribed procedure. And that is where the importance of different manuals come in. You have uh, learned um, things like uh, the purchasing manual, the accounting manual, the HR manual, and uh, with all these manuals which prescribe uh, certain uh, systems and procedures as to who's responsible to do what. You carry out uh, your activities in terms of uh, the daily operations and then develop those daily reports. Uh, with the help of uh, those reports, you 
generate information that you, of course, desire. And you collect that information on weekly basis and then monthly basis and so on and so forth. The fact is that you need to have complete information and whatever information you have for up to the minute moment that you have updated database for the past, the meaning the time that already has lapsed. With um, these reports, you can look into the things like um, the number of uh, the food packets that you have uh, distributed in one particular day to uh, different kinds of households. And when I talk about different kinds of households, you have to classify uh, which households are the ones that get food packets um, free of cost and which are the ones that get food packets at a subsidized uh, price. Well, there's a classification of um, something being totally free and something which costs, although in a subsidized manner. The fact remains you have two different segments and you have two different treatments of the record. Uh, you need to have complete financials in relation to uh, what is uh, being given away, totally free of cost, and what is it that is costing you, and you are subsidizing that cost uh, with the help of donations or with the help of uh, the other uh, supports in kind from uh, the different constituents. So whatever is the case, information that is generated has to be recorded in a systematic manner. Same is the case if you happen to be in the business of nursing home, you have to be very quick on generating complete information about who's helping you with what kind of support. If restaurants, clubs, and hotels are helping you with certain expertise, you have to put that into a very structured and formal form so that that becomes your knowledge cache. And you can draw on that whenever need be. And that is something which can be a substitute of uh, the marketing research uh, because uh, you have uh, access to uh, some information which is valid, which is authentic, and which is a uh, matter of fact. And therefore, this is kind of an information which must take precedence over anything else. The point here is that uh, any information that is generated by undertaking any dimension of the operation you happen to be a part of has to be recorded. The next uh, subsystem is known as uh, the market intelligence systems. And as the terminology suggests, it is about generating information from the marketplace uh, for future. It is not about the past. Uh, whatever has happened in the past is recorded in terms of internal reporting system that I just talked about. And this is something which uh, deals with the external environment and poses uh, the great challenge for the marketing people to develop um, an information base uh, which uh, is uh, up to date in terms of trends and developments that are taking place in the market and that may affect our future decisions. In order to generate intelligence, uh, the marketing people need to uh, maintain a continual contact with uh, the different constituents who are to be integrated in terms of uh, being on the same page uh, for the information desired by the organization. Uh, of course, uh, these constituents are the ones who are important stakeholders, and they should be taken into confidence um, for uh, you to uh, face a certain uh, strategic situation in future, and the information that you need from them uh, has to come uh, from them in a forthright manner. You also uh, may look into uh, publications and uh, all those uh, secondary research the materials that are uh, available uh, in libraries or on the internet so that uh, you can uh, attain a level of preparedness to deal with uh, the future situations. The idea here is to uh, be prepared for uh, the certain um, eventualities uh, which uh, may look into your eyes uh, in times to come. Experts also suggest that uh, the nonprofits send their managers to different seminars, uh, even if they take place in foreign countries, because uh, that is a great learning ground for managers to look into developments that are taking place uh, elsewhere in the world 
and uh, the impact of those developments um, on uh, their own organizations okay, back home. The great question here is, okay, what happens okay, once okay, you have developed information through okay, the market intelligence systems? Well, the answer lies in having somebody or having a small team that can uh, put that information or intelligence into a proper perspective. All that intelligence has to be translated into the very well-structured kind of information which can be helpful for decision-making. Things uh, that uh, may not be very relevant uh, ought to be omitted, but uh, all those developments that may affect our movement in terms of achievement of the mission have got to be recorded and we have to have um, smart managers who can give that information the right perspective so that whenever we need to have access to that information, we know what we are looking into and what is it that is applicable to our situation. The third system is what we already know and that is the marketing research system. Here, one thing I would like to point out is that uh, the marketing research, although being an expensive activity, may not leave us in totality. So in other words, there are situations in which uh, we have to count on uh, the marketing research. We have to go back to marketing research and uh, carry out uh, some level of research, uh, whether qualitative or quantitative, because there are situations uh, which uh, are to be uh, established in absolute certainty uh, only through the research findings. I'm not saying that uh, research findings uh, will tell us uh, what those situations are. They will certainly lay a very solid ground for us to move forward and to uh, move with a lot of confidence uh, toward the certainty that I referred to. Here, I may give you the example of um, the need to know what exactly should be the position of the company in the minds of your customers. So you need to carry out some kind of marketing research through maybe focus group. You need to know whether there is a need for the repositioning of the organization or what are the motivating factors for donors to donate toward your cause. What are the factors responsible for causing a shift in their preference for some other uh, non-profit organization to uh, your disfavor. You know that uh, the shifts are taking place and uh, the external environment uh, is pointing that out uh, in a very uh, vivid form and therefore you need to undertake uh, the certain corrective measures uh, and you decide to carry out research to first establish uh, what really are the motivations on part of the donors uh, who have been so active toward our cause and what is it that is making them drifting apart from our cause? So these are the kind of situations in which we need to carry out marketing research and we cannot really count on the past experience or in other words, all the information that we have been collecting by way of the daily reports or by way of the market intelligence from time to time. The need of the hour is that we carry out uh, market research and establish for ourselves what exactly are the parameters that we are looking for so that we can base our movement on that. Research is uh, extremely vital because uh, we do not really want to base our decisions on casual observations. Uh, the fact is that uh, findings tell us uh, that uh, we had a complete uh, misconception of the situation before we started getting into the market research. I would like to take you back to the example that I talked about in one of the previous components, the example of druggies. Why is it that people take to drugs? It is not because they really want to be in a highly ecstatic situation where they feel they are kind of flying and they want to be totally cut off from the rest of the world. The actual the motivating factor is not that ecstasy. It really is an escape from the troubled family life. Now, this factor of troubled family life is the one that we have established through research. This is what I'm trying to establish, that uh, until the time that we carry out marketing research, we do not know exactly the motivations. 
with behind a certain behavior. And in order to pinpoint why that behavior is taking place the way it does, we need to carry out marketing research. And uh, once we have carried out this marketing research in particular, uh, I think it leads us into a, a, a very interesting um, conclusion. And that is that we need to deal with two different segments of the market. I will not leave it to your imagination and I would rather like to talk about those very explicitly. The one is the druggies themselves. Because you as a non-profit organization could have to do something about their rehabilitation and to bring them back into the mainstream of sane society, so to say. You have to improve their welfare by putting a stop to that behavior which is causing that addiction. Okay? And the next segment that you are going to have to deal with is the families or the family members that you need to talk with very seriously about doing something so that other members of the family do not follow in the footsteps of druggies. So with the one particular program, you are approaching two different segments and you are going to position that program differently for those two different segments. Just try to understand the implications of uh, the results or the findings of the marketing research with which uh, translate into uh, having two different strategies uh, in order to deal with two different segments. I would like to talk about uh, this particular factor uh, more uh, when I talk about the positioning concept uh, in the context of uh, nonprofits, of course, um, so much for the time being. With um, the help of uh, the marketing research, we also need to carry out and establish certain causal relationships, like I talked about in the example of druggies. Let me give you another example so that uh, the concepts uh, can become very clear in our minds um, in a proper nonprofit context. Otherwise, I do have this feeling that uh, you people fully understand what segmentation is, what market research is, and uh, what is... Um, the importance of okay, having the right strategy for the right segment. But still, I would like to talk about examples from the nonprofit world so that okay, we can be on the same wavelength in terms of our understanding of the nonprofit sector. Back to the example. Okay, you are a part of a nonprofit that helps people okay, with medication on um, keeping uh, some serious ailments away. So for example, okay, the blood pressure, meaning high blood pressure and diabetes. That you are um, advocating the need to be very regular in your habit to take uh, those medicines so that you can keep the possibility of uh, being struck with that eventuality in time to come. You may like to carry out marketing research in order to develop certain causal relationships as to what is it or what are the features of different personalities that make people very habitual uh, to regularly take that medicine and uh, what are the factors that uh, may not make them uh, very regular and habitual in following what has been prescribed by the nonprofit. You may find out to your utter interest that uh, the people who are very regular in taking that medicine are not the ones who happen to be in older age brackets the meaning who have certain specific demographic features. Rather, it can be an outcome of a traumatic experience on part of people uh, who ended up in a hospital with the blood pressure problem or high diabetes okay, that caused some other problems. They were uh, taken to the hospital okay, where they understood the importance of taking those medicines they were not taking and after that episode, they became very habitual and regular. This is a finding or a revelation which has come to you with the help of marketing research. Because before that, you had just suppositions and your casual observations. Now you have exact findings. And based on these findings, you can come up with the rightmost strategies in order to grapple um, and in order to come to grips with that particular situation if not that particular situation which you may be handling very well, you may need that information to come to grips with upcoming situations because you're equipped with very authentic findings 
and uh, you can make uh, the people aware of what may happen if they do not uh, follow the program, what is being described, and if they do not um, change uh, their behavior, and if they do not uh, seriously involve themselves into the exchange which you are trying to sell to them. Uh, that is the importance of research for the non-profits. The fourth um, subsystem of the overall MIS is market um, analytic system. All the information that uh, we have collected either through internal reporting system or uh, through the market intelligence system or marketing research, uh, we have to transform all that into uh, better insights because better insights uh, help us make better decisions. And uh, the analysis that we carry out uh, within the organizations uh, could be simple to uh, sophisticated. A simple analysis could be you know, working on the spreadsheets and coming up with uh, the certain conclusions that you need to make decisions. And sophisticated ones uh, could come about with the help of application of some sophisticated st statistical uh, supports. So whatever is the situation, depending on the amount of resources that you have at your disposal, you make the decision as to how to analyze the information. But the fact is, until the time that information is analyzed, which basically has been a combination of the external environment and rather the interplay of external environment and the internal environment, there is no way that you are in a position to make good decisions for your program. Let me now take you to the a uh, graphical illustration which uh, uh, encapsulates the whole concept that I have talked about. Here, as uh, you can see uh, from this slide, uh, right in the, in the middle of the illustration, which is uh, a big box, we have uh, four systems uh, sitting side by side uh, with each other. And this is where I would like to point out once again that uh, it is not really important that all these four subsystems uh, take place or develop themselves at the same time. It could be something which, um, which develops uh, the one after the other, or uh, maybe at certain points of time, the subsystems are developing simultaneously. Fact is, there is no uh, hard and fast rule about it, uh, whether uh, you should be developing these, uh, all of these um, simultaneously, side by side, or uh, one after the other. It basically is a function of time. And it is a time-consuming effort. With the passage of time, you are in a position to improve your internal reporting and the market intelligence systems and the marketing research programs. Although I've said earlier that these programs are not followed in response to each and every situation, which is or which rather qualifies for conducting marketing research, this is something that we have to be very discreet about and very discriminating about because of shortage of funds uh, most of the time. And uh, then we have an analytical marketing system which uh, is all about analyzing the collected data and information. But important uh, arms of uh, this uh, major internal silo is what you see on the left hand side and the right hand side of this uh, the graphical illustration. On the left-hand side, uh, we have constituents in the marketing channels, uh, which uh, play their role in uh, generating uh, some vital information that goes uh, into the MIS. Then we have publics of different kinds. Uh, we have macro and environmental factors. And then on the right-hand side, uh, we have planning, execution, and control. Because the outcome of the, the MIS is what we execute, the meaning execution of our programs. And we, of course, plan for those programs, and that is why the planning shows itself as an important factor. But the fact is that execution and control are the two major things that we need to do. And as you can see, this outcome goes back into the external environment and then over again into the internal one. And this makes the whole thing an iterative process which goes on all the time. This component is on segmentation. We as marketing people know that any marketing effort is a function of the application of segmentation theory. The reason being that the whole market cannot be just the one monolithic piece and the marketing people have got to divide the market into different groups, calling them segments because the different groups of customers or people uh, to show different behaviors. 
they manifest different features. And uh, those features or those behaviors that have similarities are going to form themselves into uh, segments. And the one segment, therefore, uh, has to be composed of uh, all those customers who have so many things in common. Uh, what those things are, we are going to talk about that as well. Uh, but um, the fact remains that uh, the market has to be divided into segments. And uh, we've got to understand uh, what should be the characteristics of uh, the different segments. In other words, before we start dividing the whole market into different groups, uh, we develop profiles. And every segment that we talk about or we need to approach in the marketplace, uh, we need to define the profile of that particular segment. How do we do that and uh, what are the parameters that need to be taken into consideration before uh, we can really define our segments? Well, uh, first of all, we've got to make sure that uh, a segment has got to be uh, mutually exclusive. This feature of uh, the mutual exclusivity defines that uh, there are no overlaps among uh, different segments and uh, they are absolutely separable. If I take you back to the example of the food bank, okay, we know that okay, we're dealing with two different segments, or rather three different segments. The one segment is all about free meals, okay, which are being dispersed on a daily basis, and the other one is meals for congregations. The two segments need two different marketing management treatments, and okay, they have their own okay, the financial implications. Similarly, okay, we know that food that is being dispersed at subsidized price is yet another segment because we're dealing with families that are in a position to pay to a certain extent and the remaining portion is being subsidized by the organization. And therefore, we are dealing here with a third segment in total differential from the other two. This is what really explains the mutual exclusivity. The second characteristic of segmentation is exhaustiveness. The meaning that we've got to undertake an exercise which exhausts the whole market into different well-defined segments, leaving no portion of the market as a group which cannot be classified or which cannot be defined as any particular segment. So therefore, if the total market consists of 100 people, we've got to see to it that all those 100 people are divided into different groups. In practicality, it is not as arithmetical as I've said, but my point is that uh, we should not leave uh, any portions of the market as uh, unattended uh, segments and uh, have to make sure that uh, everybody is uh, accounted for. Let me take you back to the example of nursing home uh, where we are in the process of uh, determining as to who our target market is and we're dealing with different segments of the market that are providing us with uh, some vital information on uh, the possible qualification of the target market. We have activists and uh, we have volunteers and uh, maybe another segment uh, who are all um, helping us with uh, this vital information. And we miss out on a segment uh, which we may call of doctors uh, who attend to uh, the old age uh, the patients and chemists who sell those medicines required by the old age people. Um, all of a sudden, we realize that uh, this is a segment that really could be very helpful in pointing out uh, where that population is and uh, what are the kinds of treatments they are uh, subjected to. And uh, we somehow missed out on this, whereas this happens to be a very important segment. Here, I would like to take you back to the instrument of market intelligence, uh, which uh, should work automatically into the system in a way that uh, it indicates a very important segment uh, which can make the whole exercise very purposeful. Uh, so this is what is meant by exhaustiveness. The next feature of uh, segmentation is uh, the measurability, which is uh, all about defining the size of the market. Until the time that we know the number of addicts that we are going to uh, deal with in terms of their uh, rehabilitation and uh, the size of the market which uh, consists of uh, their families, uh, we cannot really uh, make our program uh, very um, effective. And therefore, uh, what is the size of the market? What are the motivations uh, behind uh, the different uh, behaviors 
demonstrated by uh, the target market as uh, well as uh, uh, any other uh, related uh, the group that is associated uh, with that particular segment, our exercise of uh, uh, defining uh, the segments is not really complete. The next feature which uh, the exercise of segmentation uh, must carry is um, reachability. And uh, this perhaps is uh, one of the most important features of uh, the segmentation because this basically is a function of marketers' ability to reach their target market. If they cannot reach the target market, there is no marketing at all. And therefore, uh, we have to uh, very carefully look into our ability of putting together integrated uh, communication campaigns that uh, connects us uh, with the target market. The next feature of uh, segmentation is substantiality, which basically refers to the largeness of a segment of uh, customers or stakeholders, or it uh, they may be based on the amount of consumption. Let me give you the example of uh, the two different segments in terms of their uh, largeness and also smallness, which is the opposite. You are working for uh, the fight for cancer, and you may find out that uh, a lot of many people are willing to donate toward that cause because they think it is a very noble cause, and uh, the people who have been inflicted by this serious ailment have got to be helped. And uh, you end up uh, realizing that uh, it is not just the one segment, rather it is going to be so many different segments, like uh, there could be different uh, sorts of individuals, and there could also be the corporate entities who are willing to help toward this particular cause. And you think um, you are going to have more than one segment, and every segment is going to be a large segment. Conversely, you have uh, a situation in which uh, you are trying to rehabilitate the drug addicts, meaning the druggies, but you end up not attracting too many donors because they think that this is a misery which is caused by the druggies themselves. And therefore, you may realize that the segment of donors you're going to deal with is going to be rather small. You and have to think of okay, something more creative in order to okay, keep okay, the, the interest of the organization and the purpose of the organization alive okay, so that you can work on that cause. Okay, but the segment remains small or it may remain small. Okay, what is it that you need to do in order to broaden the base of the segment is uh, going to be the study of further uh, components okay, which we shall be getting into from time to time. Okay, but the uh, the, the, the important point here is that um, a large segment uh, consisting of either customers or donors or any form of influencers or constituents is a better segment than a small segment. Because whether you achieve economies of scale whether while you carry out your whether campaigns and whether your strategic outlook is whether more firm, whether more concrete, and the more insightful. And therefore, a large segment definitely is better than a segment which is not large, or rather small. The last feature of the segmentation is that of differential responsiveness. This feature is also as important as the feature of reachability. So in other words, even if we have all the features present, in terms of dividing the whole market into different segments. And we know that we can measure the segment. We know that we can have a substantial segment in terms of this particular cause. And that we can be very good at exhausting all the options to define different kinds of segments until the time that we are in a position to reach the segment and then evoke different responses from those segments, we are not really into the business of segmentation or for that matter, good marketing management. So in other words, differential responsiveness defines different responses that are given by different market segments. If two segments come up with responses that are very similar, it means something has gone wrong with the exercise of segmentation. And uh, we need to create uh, conditions 
that whereby that we end up defining segments that elicit different responses so that we treat different segments with different marketing strategies by putting together different variables of marketing mix in different intensity.